Hi, and welcome to At Home Art Lessons with the Art Groupies. We're here today with this guy, Observant Owen. Observant Owen is like a little ant that walks across a piece of artwork and notices everything. We're going to be noticing everything about leaves. We're going to be noticing the different types of leaves for different types of trees and we're also going to be noticing the beautiful texture that a leaf has. We're going to first use the art element space and we're going to make sure that we fill up our space on our paper with organic shapes. Now we're going to do something different today. We're not going to trace around our leaf. We're not going to try to draw our leaf free-handed. We're going to put our leaf underneath our paper and we're going to create the texture by doing a leaf rubbing. Now the only colors that I'm going to use for the leaf rubbing is warm colors. So I'm only going to be using yellows, oranges, reds, and pinks, warm colors. And I'm going to take my crown and I'm going to find where that leaf is and I am just going to rub over top. And when I rub, I can stop and pick a new color and continue rubbing. Stop, pick a new color and keep on rubbing until I have my organic shape of my leaf which shows the beautiful texture. I'll take the next leaf because remember I want to fill in all that space and I'm going to do it with all these different types of leaves. Put it underneath, use a new color, and press hard and go right over top of that leaf. I can overlap my colors, set that leaf aside and put a new one underneath. Use a new color you Can stop, find another warm color and again beautiful texture for a new leaf. Nice long skinny leaf. Use a nice light pink. Finish it off with some more of that salmon color. I got a little tiny tiny leaf here. I think it's the leaf from the plant of New Jersey, which is the violet, which just seemed to grow super wild around here where I live. There you go, got that little violet leaf. We'll try a leaf from a mum. color. So this is called a leaf rubbing. It's a fun exercise. You can even go around your house and see how many different textures you have in your house. So perhaps the tile texture in your bathroom might be different from the wood floors to even the texture of a carpet. It's amazing the different types of textures that you can find and create by just doing simple rubbings. So again, this is a leaf rubbing to create some textures. And I want to remind you that we are trying to take up space in our project. Filling in this whole paper with the leaves. So I think I did a very good job with my warm colors and my organic shapes. Now the next part of this lesson, you're going to be using 
cool colors. So blues, greens, violets, and purples, even some teal. They are considered the cool colors. So I'm going to use watercolor paints. Now, using wax crowns, the watercolor paint is going to resist that wax. So you're not going to be able to cover the, the crown, especially the texture of that beautiful leaf. You're going to be left with even more of a, a beautiful contrast of those leaves. So I'm just going to be using some cool colors and I'm going to go right over top. I'm also going to use my watercolors wet. So this is going to be like a very wet piece. That's why it's probably important to use some watercolor paper. And then I want to use some salt to give that sparkly feel when it dries. But of course you got to make sure your watercolor paint is still wet when you put that on. So it, the object of this lesson is to make sure your watercolor paints are mostly water and you're using cool colors and then you can sprinkle some salt to get that sparkling effect. And you want to fill in, still trying to fill in all that space. And you really make some beautiful color combinations when the watercolor meets up with the crown, kind of changes the whole feel of the picture. So we're using warm colors and cool colors for this project. They're the two different watercolor color families and it causes it to automatically be in contrast to one another because the one color is popping out while the other color is kind of just hanging out. And again, as your water color is wet, try sprinkling some of that table salt on. But remember, it needs to be wet. Now the next part of this lesson, we're going to use a combination of glue and black tempera paint. So what I did is my regular everyday Elmer glue was about half full and I squeezed in some black tempera paint, not watercolor paint, tempera paint. And I shook it real hard and what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline some of those leaves to make them even pop out even more. And it'll just call for a beautiful piece with warm and cool colors made with our organic shape. I'm going to finish this off by sprinkling it with a little bit more salt. And voila! So now I'm going to use my special paint that I created. So my paint was just filled, I mean my glue bottle was filled with just about half glue and then I used um, some tempera paint, some black tempera paint and I undid the lid and I poured the tempera paint inside which is now calling, causing this glue to be beautiful. It's almost like creating your own um, puffy paint. So now I shook it and made sure it was all mixed nice and neatly together and I'm going to take my glue bottle. Now I don't want to leave a space. I actually want to drag it right along the paper and I want to follow that beautiful line that was created from the rubbing of that beautiful leaf and I want to go all the way around until I meet back. Now I can also, if I'd like, put in some of the veins. Don't have to do all of them. 
But remember, you want to kind of drag that tip of your glue bottle right along the paper. You don't have to do all of the leaves. You might just want to just do a few of them, and that's fine. But it's causing this beautiful contrast using this black. And the glue will stay puffy, so it'll make for a beautiful, it's almost like a organic abstract design with warm and cool colors. If you don't have any of uh, the paint and the glue, no worries. You can just wait for it to dry and get the same effect using a black Sharpie or a black crown. So if you do not have Elmer's glue or black temper paper, no worries. You can use black crown, black pastels, or even a black Sharpie. Now again, you don't really want to do all of them. Just a few would be perfect. So a leaf rubbing to create texture, warm and cool colors, that contrast, and, and even more of a contrast or an outline by using the Elmer's glue mixed with some tempera paint. So there you have it for a beautiful leaf drawing. Thanks for joining me. See you later.